You guys, I'm super excited about today's topic, which is pricing your services. So many people are just like, it's, it's not easy to figure out, especially when you're starting out, how to price your services and understand if you're charging the right amount for the amount of work you're doing, um, especially if you're gaining experience, how to navigate that, how to increase or change your prices as things go on and you offer new services, like blah, it can be such a, such a maze. Um, so I'm gonna get into that. Uh, remember, if you haven't seen it yet, that the webinar with Dan Halsey on February 13th, Wednesday at 1 p.m. Central U.S. Uh, will be held here on the Natural Capital Plant Database. We'll be walking through that and how to use that powerful tool for your permaculture and ecological design needs, finding plants and their uses and polycultures, and creating your own plant list with downloadable spreadsheets. It's a pretty awesome tool. Uh, if you're interested in talking more about business mentorship, send me a PM or comment below. I'd be happy to just get on a discovery call and learn more about you, let you know what it's all about, see if it might be a good fit for you. Today, we're talking about responsibility is the theme of the week, but you're responsible for setting the value of your service. And that is not only about the price you charge, the price you charge is actually secondary to how you value your service and um, how you perceive what other people are getting in terms of what you're providing um, and the value of that service in terms of the physical results, the results and change that's happening in their life to benefit them. So it's not just about exchanging hours for dollars. Um, I actually advise against doing that, especially as you get more efficient, you'll be selling yourself short because it doesn't take you as long to do the same thing and possibly at an even higher quality of delivery. So people value their service or product based on how valuable they feel it is. And that is a little bit counterintuitive in a way, but it's also a great answer for people, uh, potential clients that are asking you, well, or are telling you, well, your service is, is so much more expensive than other people. This is a great answer for them. It's people, you know, other people are valuing their service at, you know, how valuable they feel it is. And everyone's free to do that, of course, to price themselves at what they feel is appropriate for what they're delivering. However, I think it's important to view things from the value that we're providing rather than what we think people are going to pay. So you're going to end up at a race to the bottom of, of pricing, of enjoyment in your work, of income, if you're thinking that, well, this person can't afford, probably can't afford $1,200 just based on my assumptions about them, um, they can probably only afford like 500. Okay, I'll price it at that. Is that really good for you? Um, and you know, pricing really starts by breaking down how much you need to make a month if you're going to be full time in your business, uh, or you know, how much you how much you need to make a month based on your goals and how many jobs you'll need to do based on the service that you're offering to actually meet that income goal. And then you can get from there, it's breaking these numbers down. It also makes it measurable. So you can see, well, you know, I've brought in one job. I still need to make up $2,400 to cover my basic expenses and then an additional thousand to be able to save and invest or, you know, whatever your goals are. It's really important to have those written out. So I highly recommend doing that. Um, feel free to leave a comment below if you'd like some guidance on, you know, figuring out your goals for your business. That can, that's really the starting point for understanding your pricing. Because if you're just going out saying, well, I'll charge $30 an hour and I'll just work 40 hours a week and then it'll all work out, you're probably going to end up burning yourself out and you might not meet certain goals. Um, you might meet your financial income goals, but you might not meet your goals for spending time with your family and friends or doing the projects that you love to do, such as harvesting the blackberries when they're ripe out in the woods <laughs> versus having to work all that week. You know, um, It's really important to have some projections and outlook, not only financially, but also, are you going to be gone for three weeks in June? Um, is that is that something you need to work around to maybe get a little more work or and plan things around that? It's really important. And this is all uh, coming down to it influences your pricing because there's a lot of, I shouldn't say a lot of, but there is some important work and knowledge to get in place about yourself and your goals before you actually decide the service you're offering and the pricing of that, that's actually more the front end of the business rather than the back end, which is knowing why you're doing what you're doing and what the end result for you is so that you can know what types of results you're trying to bring other people and what the value of that is for them. So 
take responsibility for any assumptions you're making about your market as well and how that affects your service and price offerings. You know, for example, this recent uh, one and a half acre permaculture design I did, um, it was something where I was originally going to charge half of what I ended up charging for that project because I was making assumptions about the person that I was working for, which is quite dangerous, not only from a standpoint of what you price things at, but also for your understanding of your clients and providing what they really need. And going into uh, an interaction with your prospective clients and also meetings with people that you're actually working with who are paying you, from a place of just asking lots of questions to gain clarity. I don't, I don't think anyone that I've worked with has ever been like, stop asking me questions, this is too much. Um, you know, you can easily overwhelm people by talk, getting too in depth and detail with the type of thinking that's going into your design. But in terms of get, just getting clear on what they want, people really, really appreciate that. And it's actually not that common in the consulting industries in general is someone who's actually listening for the needs that their clients have and, and acting appropriately so that they, get, they really get the value and the results in their life that they're looking for from the service that they're paying you for. So you might be making assumptions based on the house or neighborhood someone lives in, what they look like, their nationality. You know. I know that we're all social, like we want to be socially conscious here, but we we do have a certain amount of conditioning, especially here in the U.S., about different types of people and where they fall and what they're wanting to invest in and what they can afford. You know, for example, there might be an Hispanic family down the street that lives in a house that's not as big as the rest of the houses, but they might be willing to spend quite a lot of money on a permaculture landscape because of the benefits it brings to them, their children, their family's health. It might be a really, really important thing for them, um, you know, versus like buying a new car. Uh, different people have different values, so it's important to understand what their goals are as well as your goals so that you guys know where you meet head to head and what you can offer each other. Um, so that's, that's, a, that's a real game changer for business and figuring out your pricing. So, and also setting healthy boundaries for yourself. Um, understand that if things are getting frustrating in your business, if they don't seem to be working well, if you seem to be working too much, or if you're not getting enough work, you are actually responsible for the way that you're showing up in your business and the types of um, the ways you're operating, the ways you're interacting with other people, the way that you're maybe spreading yourself too thin or, or promising too much for what you're actually getting paid that's determining the way that you feel about the work you're doing and understanding the boundaries, especially in a contract when you're entering an agreement professionally with somebody for a service you're providing about the level of um, delivery that you're providing for the amount of money and the the scope of work really is what the industry or professional term for this would be. It's like the scope of am I just doing this? Am I just doing plantings? Or am I also doing all the hardscape? Am I also doing all the permitting? Am I also do, hiring subcontractors? Like you need to decide how much you want to invest your time, energy, and money based on the amount of income you're getting and how, how much you enjoy working with that client. And feel free to PM me or leave a comment below if you have questions about this, if there are certain things that are coming up for you in your business that just don't seem to be working or they're really holding you up, we can start to work through some of that. Um, so having good boundaries around your scope of work and what you offer in terms of the value exchange going on between you and your clients really helps you to have the optimal level of energy to perform your best work and have a great ex to provide a great experience for your clients because if you're not feeling great about the arrangement you're there's no way that you're going to be able to show up as your best most excited most energized and and positive self it's just it's just a lot harder to do that so we're trying to make things easy your business should be a reliable stable fun thing to work on and in uh, that's the reason why we're starting these permaculture businesses we want to have a fulfilling life we want to be doing great work we want to make people happy and we want to be happy in return because give and receive give and receive it's that it's that closed loop of awesomeness <laughs> so i hope you guys got something out of this video um, remember the webinar is on february 13th check that out um, let us know if you can make it to it there will be a recording but it's best to show up live so you can ask questions let me know if you're interested in talking about business mentorship uh, we can look at what's going on for you and if it might be a good fit and let me know if you got something in particular from this video via comment or PM and if there's if there's something going on in your business or if you're just starting out and it just doesn't feel quite right but you know that permaculture is right for you um, let's, let's start to break that down. So send me a message, let me know what's going on and let's figure it out.
Hope you guys enjoyed this today. This is actually being posted automatically because I am in a cabin in the woods. <laughs> the future me is in a cabin in the woods for the weekend. Uh, hope you guys have a wonderful Friday. Talk to you later.